Well, good day all. I'm Rap Steen, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday. And we're sitting here now on the 20th of August, 2024. Well, it's an unusual day, a really unusual day. We had a down day in some of the stock indices. Look at them, they're all down. Must have been a misquote. I wake up this morning, Bloomberg, CNBC. If we're up today, it's going to be the first time in 20 years you've been up uh, nine days in a row in the S&P. It's just a statistic. First off, the markets came down so hard off the unwind trade with Japan. Then the market realized it wasn't that big of a deal and it went back up the other way. But you have a lot of data coming at you. Before we get too far, let me, let me go through this. Tomorrow you get the mortgage numbers. Eh, they'll be important, but we know interest rates have been falling. Come Thursday, I'm interested in what Freddie Mac's gonna say, but I'm looking for rates to get under 6.5%, I hope to see in 30-year mortgage, a standard one. This is, to me, an important number tomorrow. The advanced quarterly services. You know, every month we get our payroll numbers, our jobs report, but it's an estimate in many different ways as to how it's going to work. We get one from ADP, we get one from the government and so on, but there's always revisionments. And tomorrow's a revisionment day on the quarterly services. And already I'm hearing and reading Wells Fargo, Goldman, City, ideas that are anywhere from 300,000 to 1 million jobs so far have been overstated, and we might see that correction here, which would take, let's assume that we've been averaging 220, 240,000 new jobs a month, average. Maybe it takes it down to 150, 160, I don't know, right in that range. What does that do for the market? How does the Fed look at that? Because then is the jobs market as strong as it was? Now you do get another revisionment off of this and I think it's February. But let's deal with one thing at a time. You gotta deal with this report tomorrow and the, the big boys know that this is going to be our number that they're looking for revisionments in big ones. Analysts expect the large downward revision in it. The FOMC after that at one o'clock is gonna come out and we're gonna read the notes of the last meeting. Now my guess is members might have even seen the revisionments uh, at this point and we'll see what happens for Jackson Hole, you know, because the Fed chair will be asked about this. Try to imagine if you thought you were adding 200,000 plus jobs and you're not. You've been adding 150,000. Just how strong is the labor market? Do you have to get ahead of it? Do you have to cut more aggressive? I don't know. What if these guys are all wrong and you don't get the large revision? That could happen. Be ready. Tomorrow's an action-packed day. And at the uh, 9.30 in the morning, we're going to get the EIA petroleum stock. So I think you got to be looking at all this. It's going to be important. Um, we waved goodbye last night to President Biden. I went to bed before he even spoke. I, I understand he didn't come on to 11, and they have been uh, really ridiculing the DNC for going so long and over because they're losing the American audience. I mean, in Chicago, if it was 11 o'clock at night or so, what's it on the East Coast? People go to bed. This was his goodbye speech uh, where he got to look at a, a real arena full congratulating him. He didn't get that when he became president because of the pandemic. So I think it was uh, poorly planned. When we take a look at what we're seeing here, well, uranium finally, I thought it might be making a bit of a low, it is. I'd be watching Rivian here. Anything another dollar break is probably where you're gonna see value traders step in on that market is my guess. You've been acting strong in the gold. Copper, while it's down here, there's been a change made in China. Suddenly China in July, very quietly, allowed, I understand it's 10 different provinces, of the cities in those provinces, we're not talking Beijing, but we're talking good enough sizable provinces. I think Huan was one of them. And they allowed the cities to say, okay, we have unfinished projects, we have new homes that are for sale and they're not moving, let's let them go to market rate. Now, when in the Chinese, as I understand it, you file a permit, to create a project, it gets approved, you have to have in it what the selling price is going to be. 
where it's going to be. Unlike in America and other Western countries, where supply and demand give you that price. Now, the non-new home market does fluctuate according to the supply demand, but not new homes there. So they made a change very quietly. And on that change, what happened is, from what I read in the stories today, prices fell from roughly 13 to 29 percent. Why did the government suddenly do that? Well, number one, these provinces, a lot of them need cash. And when real estate comes to a grinding halt, where's their revenue source? The government doesn't want to keep printing money, so they're allowing that to take place. And the banks are eager to work things, tax revenue, business to the banks, so on and so forth, at a severely discounted price because that's the market price. But it also means that the goods to finish those places, because a lot of these are unfinished, ah, you got to buy copper, you got to buy drywall, other things, everything that's in there. Keep that in the back of your mind. There's a good story about that today. I think Dow carried it. Uh, Amazon still holding on here, up another 66 cents. NVIDIA gave some back. Uh, Boeing today gave back about 7%. It's going to go up and down like that. Remember, they're testing one set of planes that they've been testing this plane since 2013. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's still not ready, and I, I doubt it'll be ready in 2025, as they're hoping. But they found that one of the parts had developed fractures, so they'll get that fixed. But now they're, they've got Boeing under the scrutiny because another plane that's been in service a long time uh, plunged in the air, and they want to see why, so that all the planes have to go back. This is typical for Boeing and something you're going to deal with. In GM, as you can see, we've continued the ride to the upside. The trend is certainly up. You've got higher lows, higher highs. You easily cleared this hurdle right here, and the market's added from that hurdle. The market's now in an area very important. You know, I'm a firm believer in Bollinger Bands. Once I learned what they were and how to work with them, they changed how I look at charts. And these are moving averages. So you're fighting a battle where you're trying to stay over the first challenge of the 100-day average. You had not been back over it since the beginning of August. You're back over it for the first time. But the resistance is right on top of you in this Bollinger Band at 46.82. So I, I think the upside's somewhat limited right here. I think you got to be careful. Watch what's going on uh, through that. And in terms of momentum, you're overbought, not embedded. So I'm looking for some profit taking to set in on this rally. In Rivian, I'm looking real hard at a value play at 1224. That does not mean the chart is screaming by, but I do think that this is going to prove to be, as we look back at it, 1224, a real test for support in the market. You have a bearish embedded reading. The trend is down. Once it gets there, that's where I'm expecting uh, short covering to set in. And you can also see that your 18-day average is quickly trying to get to the 200. So it, it's a number I'd be watching, and no, I am not saying to buy it. I'm saying I think it can get there, and that opens the door where now I start to look with interest at the market on the long side. Not yet, but on it. CrowdStrike, look at how it's come back. Yeah, they, they blew it, they did a terrible thing, they're gonna have lawsuits, uh, which they have. They're going to have to give up on licensing a certain amount to keep the clients. It'll get behind the company. And the company, back here, it's telling you where the value is. The 200, 212 area is pretty interesting. I don't think you're going to easily keep rising from here to past the 275, the upper Bollinger Band, is you're overbought and you've spent a lot of energy to get up here already. In uranium, as I said, you lost the bearish embedded reading. I thought you'd go to the 18-day average. The market bottomed out against this Bollinger Band number, and this is your resistance. It is not in a sell mode. The question is, can it, it, with tonight's close being over the 18-day average, can it build on that to try to go higher? First time that I'm looking at that, going, okay, can you prove anything? You also want to look at the weekly chart. Dell. Look at how it's recovered from getting overdone at 87, and it's come back and added $30 a share. That's pretty big. I mean, come on, that's a nice rally back. I think you now are going to be looking at the battle for support at one, for support 106.63, 103.60. 
That's the zones I'm looking at, and I think this bad wave is likely behind them at this point. In Lennar, can the market get up and do anything? Well, why gamble right here when you're going to learn so much tomorrow at 9 in the morning off this quarterly services report, and on Friday you're going to hear the Fed chair talk. But obviously, home builders for this season didn't get the business that they wanted. Interest rates at 65 to 7.25% mortgages were too much. Now the question is, what do you do here? And even when they bought down mortgages, what can you do? There's still people that'll buy, but the, the book's not going to be like people coming out of the woodwork to get something done. And XHB, this is the home builder ETF, well, you've spent all this energy getting back to the 18-day average. You probably spent a certain amount of it out, is what I'd say. But you are in an uptrend tonight unless you close back under 111.36. In financial services, you're overbought. I would say that the pros will dump. I'm one of those guys. Uh, if the market got up to 44.68, the Bollinger top, I think you'd get pretty aggressive. Uh, people want to come out of the market in the near term. In the industrial sector, we've had this wonderful rally. You, you wouldn't know it if you look at, be it the Philly Fed Index, the New York, the Empire State, you look at Chicago's manufacturing, it's not there, but the market's anticipatory, and it's anticipating that interest rates are going down and business is going to spur on. How much of that do you want to pay for on that rally is the question. On the energy market, I didn't think we'd hold right here because I think you're still slowing down in world economies, and that's why this race to cut interest rates is going to be so important. In the gold market, still up and away. Why not? Interest rate cuts, falling dollar, gold, I want to own gold, China, I want to own gold, uh, and away it goes. And very, very important. Silver, the same thing. I mean, the metals have come alive. If you watch my, and I'm not going to review it here for you, my financial futures, I go into why coppers had this rally. I, I saw a story today that just my eyes opened when I read it. Look for good support to develop 4128 to 4083. I think we're through with the big washout in the copper is what I'm trying to say. I have reasons to believe that from a fundamental point of view as well. In TLT, higher lows, higher highs. You're going to be gambling here at this. And BND, what does that 9 o'clock quarterly report show? What are we going to see in the Fed minutes? And what's Fed uh, uh, going to happen by a Fed Chair Powell on Friday at Jackson Hole? Dollar, as I said, sinking away, euro taken off to the upside. If you want to learn Bollinger Bands and what this all means and how you come down and once you embed, how do you come back into markets or add to positions, take a look at my enhanced Bollinger Band course. You can do so by clicking up here and or watching this advertisement and learning how I do that. I'm I Rapstein. You have a great day. Welcome. I'm I Rapstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now many of you have taken my regular charting course and if not you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time and on a chart it will offer on the top part resistance on the bottom support and the idea is the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that mine do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. 
If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.